All right, it is 5.30 and we are back in regular session for our presentation period. Today we have one presentation and it's going to be given to the Elks Club. Kathy Gavin is here representing the Elks Club, but Donna Poizina is here representing the, Don the Elks Club, and Tom Heil is here representing the Elks Club. And I'll have you guys meet me by the podium there and I'll read this proclamation for you. All right, this is a City of Desert Hot Springs proclamation. Whereas the benevolent and protective order of the Elks has designated May 1st through 7th as Youth Week to honor Americans junior citizens for their accomplishments and to give fitting rec recognition of their services to the community, state, and nation. And whereas Desert Hot Springs Elks Lodge 2639 will sponsor an observation during this week in tribute to the junior citizens of this community. And whereas no event could be more deserving of our support and participation than the one dedicated to these young individuals who represent the nation's greatest resource and who in the years ahead will assume the responsibility for the advancement of free society and whereas our youth need to need the guidance, inspiration, and encouragement, which we alone can give in order to help develop these qualities of character essential for future leadership and go forth to serve America. And whereas to achieve this worthy op objection, objective, we, sure, we should demonstrate our partnership with the youth, our understanding of their hopes and aspirations, and sincere willingness to help prepare them in every way for the responsibilities and opportunities of citizenship. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Scott Mattis, on the behalf of the City of Desert Hot Springs City Council, do hereby proclaim the first week of May 2017 as Youth Week, May 1st through 7th. Have the if the elks want to say a few words and then we'll take some more pictures. I'm Tom Heil from the Elks, and this is our Youth Week nationwide. Uh, we support a lot of youth activities here in Desert Hot Springs. We're financial supporters of almost every youth group here, uh, which helps keep kids off the streets and out of gangs and that's what we're trying to do in addition to that we have a drug awareness program nationwide uh, which we believe to be very successful judy shea wants to say a couple of words i don't want to say a couple of words but um you know we've been spending like 1.1 1.7 million dollars every year on information for alcohol and drug abuse prevention and uh, it's essential that um, we make it very well known that there is a solution. There's a solution to um, these kids growing up, alcoholics, drug addicts, bullying, etc. And it all stems from awareness. And uh, Betty Ford program has a program for seven to 12 year olds. And if you say you're from Desert Hot Springs, it could be free. So um, it's a very good prevention program. All my grandkids have been through it. And most, most of them are, well, the last of the grandkids is going off to college in August. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Desert Hot Springs, for having us here and for the proclamation. A quick thank you to the troops 1606 for your wonderful turnout. I'm proud of you guys. And then before you sit down, uh, Judy's also an elk. Uh, we're going to get some of the kids up here and take some pictures with the city council in the background. Yeah. But I wanted to say one quick thing. I've been a member of the Desert Hot Springs Little League for, it's going on 18 years now. And the Desert Hot Springs Elk has always supported Desert Hot Springs Little League and given thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars probably over the 40-some uh, years that they've been around. Um, and I want to say that they do this constantly for the youth organizations in our community. Um, from 
junior all-american football to soccer to the boys and girl scouts uh, any youth organization that comes forth and with their bingo program coming about they were able to give lots more in the in, in the in the past here so it's a very important and thank you for what you guys are doing for our community they recently had a golf tournament i hope everything went well saturday that's one of their major fundraisers and again they they give back to the military they give back to the youth of our community and they're they're great organizations so thank you for what you're doing It will be in recess till 6 p.m. Thank <laughs> you. 
coming up, we thought, did we miss? <laughs> They're just practicing. There you go. You've got to watch the seal. Seven. <laughs>
That's what it's called. I all right, ladies and gentlemen, if you can have your seats or stand in your place, <laughs> we really appreciate you uh, packing in here again. Before we start the meeting, we want to thank Mission Springs Water District. I believe the president, Russ Martin, is over in the corner here hiding. I want to thank them for allowing us to use this location uh, due to another accident to Carl May and having to go through a remodel process again. We understand it's a tight fit, so I, I, I do believe after the Pledge of Allegiance there'll be a little more room there. Uh, but we encourage you to stay if you want to be part of your city government. With that said, we are called the meeting to order. This is the City of Desert Hot Springs regular meeting of the City Council and the City Council serving as a successor agency to the Redevelopment Agency Board for May 2nd, 2017. This is our 6 p.m. regular session here at the Mission Springs Water District Boardroom. Roll call, please. Councilmember Betts? Present. Councilmember McKee? Present. Councilmember Zavala? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Parks? Here. And Mayor Menace? Present. We'll first have an invocation given by Reverend Bruce Montgomery of Grace Church, and then the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, the flag presentation by Troop 1606, and will lead us, uh, Isaac Ron will lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, the creator and sustainer of the universe, the one who sees and knows all, we gather acknowledging your presence, asking you, who is the source of all wisdom and goodness and light, to shine your light, your wisdom, your goodness upon this body and the deliberations that will be made tonight, especially asking a blessing upon our mayor, each of the council people, the staff, those who will be participating. We pray for a good sense of harmony, listening to one another, looking for the vision that will move our city forward. In your most holy name I pray. Amen. 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 Again, thank you to Troop 1606. City Attorney is going to report on closed session. Before she does, I did recuse myself from one item. There was uh, uh, a third party, no, independent expenditure uh, made on my behalf during the last campaign, forcing me, due to our city ordinances, to recuse myself. Um, city Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of Council, there was no reportable action. All right, we'll move on to the approval of the agenda. At this time, we'll be approving the agenda plus a consent calendar in whole, unless somebody wants to pull an item from the consent calendar. I'll accept a motion. So moved. Motion to approve the agenda as is, approving the consent calendar in whole. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So it passes unanimously. At this time, we're going to take public comments. I have a few here. They're a blue card. If you are here and you want to speak, in public comments, these are items that are not agendized. Um, you will have up to three minutes, and the speakers may not yield their time to others without the consent of the mayor. All comments are to be directed to the city council and shall be devoid of any personal attacks. Members of the public are expected to maintain professionalism, courteous decorum, and during the comments. Our first speaker is going to be Judy Shea, followed by Mike Picardi. And the timer today is, who's our timer? 
Doria Wilms, our deputy city clerk, will be timing you. She will raise her hand at 30, 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Time for one breath. Hi, Judy Shea, uh, Desert Hot Springs. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. You're all looking very good today, even though it's getting a little bit warmer out. Um, some of you have may, may have seen the article um, in the Desert Sun online. Okay, it's about uh, a facility that uh, I told you last time I was trying to open up a veteran center. Okay, um, my nephew is going uh, on the 8th, I believe it is. He's going into the National Guard. And my grandson-in-law, is that right? Anyway, he, he just went from Pendleton to 29 Palms today. And I had the pleasure of having my granddaughter here most of the day. It was kind of cool. Beautiful. And uh, anyway, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for veterans because of my brother, my cousin, and my husband, who all died as a result of being in Vietnam. And, uh, you know, my brother died at 47, my husband at 45, and Jimmy, he died in his, he was, he lived probably long, in the 50s. And uh, must have been the California air, because <laughs> he lived in Burbank. But, you know, we have 39 homeless across the whole valley that are veterans, okay? And we had 15, I was told, that are out of um, Roy's, okay? Regardless, you know, I've only gotten two negative compl uh, comments about this particular article. It's because at the top it says uh, we're going to host the Valley's newest homeless shelter. Well, that's not exactly true. We've got six rooms up there at uh, Dr. Bingham's old property that was a medical center twice and a, uh, twice it was a church. And one time we did have a bunch of homeless in there 10 years ago before Roy's opened. Um, we had to bring it all up to code and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. So we're working on it diligently right now, and I've got several providers that already said they would do vocational, educational, and mental health uh, counseling. And I also have a meeting next week with a provider that has 17 other houses in, you know, Riverside County. So they could be a possible provider. You know, I can't do everything. I can't run a whole show and do intake and everything. So it does have to be done by somebody else. But um, there is funding through the cities, through CVAG, et cetera, um, for a provider to provide this kind of service. And I don't think it's going to impact, especially the veterans. I have three persons that have already been referred to me for the center. One is homeless, period, 77 years old. The other one is living in uh, San Bernardino in a torn down trailer, court, and yard. Um, and then there's one more that's a veteran who's going to school, always got his degree, and he's gonna, he's trying to get his psychology degree. And uh, a very nice gentleman, you know. And there's three of them that already would like to come to this kind of place. So I'm just hoping that, you know, whenever any negative comments come up, we think, what are they supposed to do anyway? Sleep in the, you know, streets and under the bridges? No. Let's take care of them. They took care of us, you know, so we could stand here and breathe free air. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Picardi followed by Russ Martin. Good evening, Council, Mayor, staff. Um, I got a pretty big list here. Um, it's winding down the end of the season, so there's lots going on. This Thursday, May 4th at 6 p.m. at the Senior Center, the Friends of the Desert Hot Springs Library will be hosting a presentation from Joanna Stock, who will be speaking of her book, A Woman of Vision, A True Story of a Blind Woman's Incredible Life, her accomplishments, and her one last thing on her bucket list. So this is going to be at the Senior Center. It's open to everyone. It's free. Uh, this is something that the Friends has been putting on. This is our second season, and we'd like to have everybody join us for our final uh, event this year. Uh, speaking of a final event, the, uh, this Sunday at Christ Lutheran Church, uh, 64 565 Pearson at 4 p.m. is the last concert of this classical music series this year. Uh, it will feature the City of Angels saxophone quartet with a wide and varied repertoire that has been <clears throat> excuse me, developed and seasoned over time, the ensemble consistently seeks new ways to connect with the audiences by sharing commentaries which focus on the stories behind the music that they perform. Uh, on uh, May 13th, uh, following Saturday, the Family Fun Festival will be held at Tedesco Park from 12 until 5. 
Uh, some of the some of the things they're going to have at this event is a giant obstacle course, live music, a duck tank, which I understand some city folk might be participating on, uh, face painting, hula hoop contest. God, if my back wasn't bad, I might win that. Um, <laughs> all food and drinks are only a dollar, and this is for uh, a good cause. So bring the whole family for a fun-filled uh, day hosted by the Mission Outreach Project of Desert Hot Springs. Uh, one quick thing about Memorial Day, there are two things happening at this point. One, of course, is the uh, observation of Memorial Day at Veterans Park, which begins at uh, 10 o'clock on Veterans Day, which is the 20, I'm sorry, Memorial Day, which is the 24th? 9th. 9th, 29th, I'm sorry, 29th. Um, this was just handed me to do, so bear with me. Um, it's going to start at 10 o'clock with a flyover from, with an antique plane, not really antique, I guess it is, but it is an antique plane. World War II C-47 will do a flyover. We will have the Desert Hot Springs High School ROTC choir. Uh, the mayor will be there along with city staff. Uh, and there's supposed to be a guest speaker, which I haven't gotten information about yet. Um, also, on the same day, VFW Post 1534 is having a family day to honor our vets, beginning at 10 o'clock with breakfast, and it's open to the public. So that's down at the VFW. That's a separate event. Now, all of this can be found on DHS Daily, and I just want to make a quick comment about DHS Daily. There's uh, uh, rumors out there, for lack of a better word, that this is being paid for by people, uh, some say within the city government, and uh, uh, I want to make sure that everyone knows this is free. No one makes money on this. No one is getting a salary on this. The, the, it is being uh, held on a server by the gentleman uh, who designed the website. And I just want to make clear that everyone knows that there's no money exchanging hands to have DSF, DHS Daily up and running as a calendar for the entire community. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for letting me stretch out. Thanks. Russ Martin, followed by Eddie Johnson. Russ Martin, and I'm, I'm here tonight uh, wearing a different hat. I'm representing the Cabot's Museum Foundation. And we have an event upcoming, the annual uh, evening at the Pueblo, which is a is a, a wonderful event that's held every year. <clears throat> it's kind of the must-see, must-go-to uh, event in the Coachella Valley. Draws uh, people from all over. Um, do we have any fans of The Voice, the TV series The Voice, in the room? Okay, yeah. Oh, sorry, I guess I'm the only one. <laughs> uh, two seasons ago, Barry Minifield was a contestant uh, on, on, on that show, and he did quite well. He, got a, he was uh, eliminated during a knockout round, but uh, that was after receiving much praise from all of the judges as being a really stellar. He's going to be one of the entertainers. We're having uh, two musical acts. Uh, Barry will be performing during the reception time at 5.30 until dinner, and then we have another... Uh, dance band playing called, and I'm not familiar with these uh, folks, but I understand they're pretty good. Uh, Eric Pontius told me they were, so I have to believe him. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that uh, music would be a, a, by a group called the Ghost Light Trio. Uh, if anybody's interested in attending, um, you can get ticket information by calling 760-329. 7610. And again, that's May 20th. May 20th. So mark it on your calendars. Thank you. Thanks, Russ. Eddie Johnson, followed by Danielle Poloni. My name is Eddie Johnson, Vietnam vet, Desert Hot Springs. I'm going to mention about the Veterans Park, how great it's looking. I went up there today. Yeah, the benches are all painted on the metal part. I'm, I'm glad you painted the water fountain, whoever it was, because I was going to bring that up. Blue was looking kind of bad. Everything's in matching now. I've also just donated a POW flag and also another USA flag, and I hope Danny can get that up. If not today, tomorrow. The US flag that's up there now is pretty bad, and uh, I just think it was time to replace that. I'm also waiting for uh, Scott of Public Works. Uh, they donate a lot of US flags that buy them in bulk. So since they don't have one up there yet, I decided to donate the U.S. flag I have for that park now. Also, I just think the park is looking awesome. And I realize those trees that were there were big and they gave a little shade in the winter. But in the summertime, they gave no shade and they're getting very brittle branches and I'm afraid they're going to fall one day. That's why they took the big trees out. Everybody's complaining about the trees. The only ones that complain are the ones that drive by and look at the park. 
they're not there every day. Like, I'll go up there as much as I can to set up there. I'm loving that park every day. It's looking great. I want to thank everybody in the city and the public worker people, such as Daniel, the public, uh, city, uh, public work manager. A great job they've done on that, and please continue with that. I think it's going to be great. When the ribbon cutting comes, I'll get the sharp scissors. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you, Eddie. That's your three. Yeah, also, uh, the Veterans um, Vietnam Memorial Wall is going to be on. Eddie, I'll have to, I'll have to talk about that on my comments. Your three minutes are up. I'll wait. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. Daniela Poloni, and she is our last speaker. If there's anybody else that would like to speak, you can add a card. This is your final call. Take your time. <laughs> My name is Danielle. And you can I speak just a little closer to the mic. Sorry. Thank you. And I'm asking for a change in your code enforcement. I came home the other night. My son, who is seven years old, uh, has been diagnosed with a tumor in his spine and is cancerous. I came home from work one day. In my mailbox was a code enforcement violation notice. My son had had a massive seizure, was rushed to the hospital desert, and then airlifted to Loma Linda. Code enforcement decides to pass by my home and see my vehicle, who I had to carry my son into the house. 110 pounds is not very easy when you're a single mom. I got a violation in the mail stating that my vehicle was parked on the rubble and that it was not allowed. If he would have taken two minutes to come in, to my door and say your vehicle is not properly parked, I would have been able to explain the fact that I have a seven-year-old who lives day by day. So I'm asking for, I don't know how this goes. I've never ever regret, I moved from the high desert to be closer to a closer hospital for my son. And as well, I work at Eisenhower in the, in the emergency room. I'm a hardworking mom. My kids are my world. And to come home and have something like that afraid with code enforcement, I shouldn't be afraid to move here to Desert Hot Springs and live. I don't know what kind of change I can ask for other than a plea to just try to change the way that code enforcement deals with the public. I'm not the only one, but I'm asking if you guys would just understand and see what you can do. Thank you. We can't have a conversation back and forth, but I'm gonna have the city managers going to address. Danielle, can you see uh, Luke Rainey right there next to you, get all your information and we'll get a resolve for you. We hope your uh, your son and you. We do can't have a back and forth. Oh, it's your question. It wasn't a back and forth. Are you who you have your question for? For the speaker. Again, you cannot have a back and forth. So you can ask the speaker or get her information from the city clerk. All right. With that said, we're going to move on to uh, city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was wondering if Danny could come up for a minute. We want to give a report um, on a couple of things. Uh, the current status of the Carl May. I think we're going to be doing this on a regular basis. <laughs> and uh, also, also a lot of folks have noticed the sign slash mural on the side of uh, the old Sidewinders. And we want to describe uh, that a little further, uh, what the process is, what they did do, and what they didn't do. So I've asked Danny to talk about that a little bit. Can you start with Carl May, Danny? Sure. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. Mayor, members of the council, the Carl May, uh, the painting and the walls are already complete. The, all the plumbing has been replaced and repaired. We are just doing the final touches. The carpet should be installed at the end of this week, early next week. So hopefully by the end of next week, we should have everything ready to go. We are being um, positive on that, but I'll keep giving you guys another update. But yeah, by next week, everything should be done. And we have brand new restrooms, or at least remodeled restrooms, and then we have brand new flooring. Um, as far as the side, side, the old sidewinder. That's your three minutes, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> The old sidewinder on Pearson Boulevard has now had new ownership. It's going to change. It's going to be a new restaurant or a new uh, venue. They're actually currently doing interior remodel. There's interior tenant improvements being um, completed. And part of the interior tenant improvements is the exterior as they painted a sign mural. Uh, they have been notified that it is considered a sign and it is larger than what is accepted. So we have given them the different variance uh, applications that will go through planning commission if they decide to move through that way or, or reduce the, science, the sign size to actually meet our zoning code. But we are in communication with the owner and he is uh, aware of, of, of what the violations are. Um, I could lose my, anything, any other questions? Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. So you're notifying the owner who put up that big sign that they yes. have the option to go to the planning commission and request a variance? <coughs> yes. Okay, great, thanks. Anything else, Mr. City Manager? No, sir, Mr. Mayor, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, nothing else from staff, it looks like. Uh, Mayor and council member comments. Uh, I think I've started down there a couple times. I'll start down here this time. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be quick because this is going to be a long meeting. I attended the CVAC homeless meeting. We continue to work on um, methodologies to deal with Roy's closing at the end of June. Uh, I, I think over the next couple of meetings will become more clear as to what's going on. I did want to say that one of the priorities for the county is to make sure that the people that are in Roy's right now are housed by June 30th. I've been told that of the 81 people that are in place right now, 67 of them have, have found a place to go. So hopefully at least we're not going to see a surge initially. Uh, I attended the mayor's state of the city. Uh, it was an interesting event. Somehow I got to speak about homelessness. I don't know how that happened, but uh, it, it's always fun to talk with the people of Desert Hot Springs. It's, it's a good thing. Uh, I attended a Sunline event that was celebrating the fact that they got $12.5 million from uh, the clean air funds from the AQMD. And what, what a big, this is a big deal because Sunline has always pushed technology. They were, I think, the first bus organization that uh, used natural gas rather than diesel. All, all their buses became na natural gas much quicker than anyone else. These are going to be fuel cell buses. And I'll let, I'll let Russ talk a little bit about that, but uh, it, it was a good event. There were a lot of people there that uh, were happy about what was going on. I also attended uh, the Smooth Transition event, which was raising money for the Smooth Transition program. Uh, for those of you that don't know anything about that, it's a vocational school that's in town that's trying to deal with a lot of the issues that we have with people that don't want to go to college but want to have a skill that they can market. Uh, I also attended the Revenue Committee uh, as both the Revenue Committee and the Council as far as looking at the Lou Edwards uh, program, survey that took place. Uh, everyone that's interested in that should look at the city website. The city website has all of that on, uh, on it. It's important to look at it because it asks the citizens in a survey about what was important to them in the city of Desert Hot Springs, how the city government was doing, and uh, where they thought we should be going. So uh, it was an interesting meeting at that point, and I'm glad to see that all of it has been put out for everyone to see. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem Parks. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on the 19th of April, I attended the Coachella Valley Economic Partnership Board meeting. Um, most of the meeting was a, um, uh, a report from Pathways to Success and the fact that they're separating from CVIP and they're going on their own, uh, totally funded on their own and their own 5013C. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, I attended as well the Smooth Transition Fundraiser at Miracle Springs. And on April 27th, I attended the second LAFCO meeting. Uh, much discussion regarding a request from the city of Menifee to separate from their local parks district. That particular agenda item after going on for about an hour or more was continued. Uh, we discussed the audit and the upcoming budget, budget, which was information only. And then that evening I attended the soup supper, a very interesting presentation about General Patton and the Patton Museum uh, out there on, um, in Mountain Center on uh, Highway I-10. And that concludes, I'm sorry, April 29th, great turnout at the Elks Annual Tournament Fundraiser. That, that's it. Thank you. Council Member Zavala. Um, well, I had quite the busy week last week. I was in Sacramento and Merced most of the time uh, doing some policy advocacy at the Capitol. Uh, we took some students up there and we had a great time. Um, I will be going to the Coachella Valley Conservation Commission meeting this next week, as well as the Coachella Valley Mountains Conservancy meeting. And then I'll be giving a speech at the transfer ceremony at COD for their TRIO program. Mr. Betts. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Wardman Park swim season begins in just 18 days from now. So uh, that's on May 20th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The opening day will feature food, fun, and prizes, so uh, hope everyone will turn out and take a jump in our pool. 
Um, we have two new covered bus stops going in our city this week. Uh, perhaps you've seen the construction. There's one at Mission Lakes Boulevard by El Mirador. And the second one, I believe, is on uh, Two Bunch Palms and Cactus. These are covered shelters. Uh, we're working on getting more. These will be the standard uh, bus shelters. Had some conversation with the uh, city manager who has got a keen interest in, I think probably talking about on Palm Drive, doing something more like what the rest of the Valley does with a little bit of upgraded shelters. There's some possibilities where we can get the money from CVAG for what they would expend on that and then put more to it with ours. And I want to compliment the uh, city manager for uh, the work we see going around, not just Wardman Park, as was mentioned, but you know, a real eye for doing what the city needs is to, to be a better looking city. So thank you very much for that. And on this subject, just a small example. Um, I did accept a $12.5 million check from the Cal Air, Air Resources Board for uh, five hydrogen buses. I'm the president of Sunline, so I got to accept the check, which was nice. Um, <laughs> The, uh, the of the board that is, and um, and it was 1994 that the last bus, diesel bus, rolled in and out of that facility, and after that they went to um, natural gas, and we have a local resident, Richard Cromwell, who can be largely credited with this transition to clean air. These hydrogen buses take water and air. Sorry, I didn't do very good in physics class, but this was the explanation I heard. <laughs> take water and air. And the only thing that comes out of it is water. At the end of the day, they're generating the electricity with hydrogen. It's basically an electric bus, but what's making that electricity is the hydrogen. And it's completely clean air. And so what Sunline's doing now with the, um, the all-natural gas fleet and some new electric, all-electric buses, and now these hydrogen buses, is that we're showing you can move a whole lot of people without polluting the air. So the agency is taking the lead and is doing really good things, and uh, we're certainly getting our share of attention here in uh, in Desert Hot Springs, and we'll keep working for that. Um, the DHS calendar is, um, you know, if you want to see what's going on in the city, and I want to thank Mike Picardi for attending these meetings and stepping up here and letting us know what's going on. And after I figured out. Uh, using it with some help. Thank you, Mike. Um, it's a very useful resource. So if you want to see what's going on in your city, I don't think there's a thing that you can miss. You won't miss an event if you pay attention to that one. Um, Pearson Plaza, I think we have a grand opening on May 17th. And um, I think the council's supposed to be there. If not, we'll just crash the party anyhow. So uh, show up. huh? Pearson Plaza, it's right across. I, I believe if we get some information from staff on that and get our formal invitations, and that'd be great. I, I, I went into the building. I walked in and talked to the guy, and he said, well, you're invited, but where well, can I get the invitations out? So just make sure we get one. And um, attend the SCAG annual meeting on Thursday. They're taking up uh, various issues at the regional meeting, but one of them is a item that came pretty content became contentious at the League of California Cities meeting, regional meeting, regarding the diamond lanes throughout uh, Riverside County. If you notice, sometimes during the day up in LA, you're stuck in traffic while the two lanes that are diamond lanes have nobody in them. So the proposal from Assemblyman Cervantes is that when it's not busy, people at the off-peak times, people should be able to use those to free up traffic. Now, SCAG staff has made a recommendation that uh, we oppose that measure. And originally, the League of California Cities had opposed that measure. And I know RCTC opposed it for good reason, but there seems to be some debate on that. So I don't know uh, where we go on that one as a policy committee. I may just you know, do this. But I, I think it's an a, a initiative that makes good sense to free those lanes up. So. Um, if any council members have any strong feelings that way or the other, I'm certainly well-versed on the RCTC considerations, but uh, so I don't know what I'm going to do on that one. It wasn't time to ask you guys. Huh? Not agendized. See, I was going to, but she was, <laughs> who going to get after us? Just a couple of questions. Um, 
questions that come up, Taco Bell, Hacienda, and Palm. How are we doing? I'm going to bring the expert up. Just, if you could just let us know what stage it's at, because everybody keeps saying, oh, I heard that was canceled, I heard that was canceled. No, no, it's not canceled. Well, you say that again louder? It is not canceled. Okay. It's actually currently in plan check. We just got the grading and street plans back this week, and I know California Coach got the building plans at the beginning, or at the end of last week, actually. So I think this is a third plan check, which should be the final or semi-final plan check. After all the plans are approved, they should move into construction fairly fast. I spoke to the representative, local representative, and they want to move and start construction this summer, so we're still on schedule. Good. And I know you guys, when you hear, oh, there's nothing happening, there's nothing happening, you go, what are you talking about? We've been working really hard on this. And uh, you don't realize is you just don't put up a building. There's certain things that have to be taken care of. So uh, anybody out there thinks that this isn't coming, you've now heard it from the authorities on the source. So thanks for your efforts on that. Um, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my report won't be too long as there wasn't a lot in this last few weeks, but uh, I did meet with Desert Regional Medical Center. There's a, a new employee. Her name is Gail Whitstone. She is the Trauma Injury Prevention Community Outreach Coordinator. Uh, she was hired because most uh, all trauma centers nationally have to do some community outreach on the major injuries that are taken into the trauma center. And one of the major injuries in the Coachella Valley for this trauma center is pedestrian accidents, which identifies the local cities and county areas as the most um, <clears throat> the most prone to these accidents. Palm Springs is number one, and unfortunately, Desert Hot Springs is number two. But what is positive about this is that they're willing to spend money on education, which has been something that I've been talking about for over a year. We can find a lot of capital improvement grants to improve areas for better pedestrian safety and bicycle safety, but we can't find a lot of money for outreach for educational opportunities. And so Gail had just emailed me recently and we met and we talked and we're going to be unveiling a program here that will start in the schools and go through uh, our other organizations on pedestrian safety. So we're pretty thrilled about that. Uh, the Town Hall Series continues. Uh, the Town Hall Series is a, is a short State of the City, about a 30 to 40 minute State of the City, and then we actually give Q&A opportunity to the public. I have found that this is the easiest way to get information out there and to get information answered. Too many times uh, I've seen throughout the 10 years I've been on City Council is that as mayors, including myself, my first year, is that we speak a lot about what's going on for that city. It's a one-day event and it's gone. And we don't give a lot of opportunity to Q&A because there's so much information. So we're kind of doing something that is morphing each month into more information or we're taking some information out and adding different information. So if you've already seen a town hall, it won't be the exact same town hall. It'll be a little more information as time goes on. So May, t May 24th at the Miracle Springs Hotel at 6 p.m., myself, the council, and, and staff members will be there to give the state of the city again and answer your questions. And um, we give about two hours, and so it gives us about an hour and 15 minutes to answer questions, and we usually take up most of that. So please come out and support it. It's being hosted by the Noon Rotary, again, at Miracle Springs Hotel, 6 p.m. on May 24th. Uh, this last Saturday, May 22nd, I need to apologize to some of the organizations. There was a lot of events that day, um, but I was I came down ill, and I haven't been ill like this in a long time. <clears throat> I did take quite a bit of medicine and was able to get out of the house for about an hour for a smooth, the Smooth Transition fundraiser in the evening, but I did miss three events that day, and I apologize. I hope they all went well. Um, I am finally getting better, thank God. Uh, but Smooth Transition, again, as uh, Mr. McKee and uh, Ms. Parks alluded to, uh, is an organization in our community. They've taken over the alternative education site at Stater Brothers Shopping Center. If you're looking to get certified educational training that are that is accredited and it can help you in life when it comes to making more money in your industry, there's great opportunity there. And we'll be talking more about that in the future. But take, a, take some time, walk in the door, introduce yourself, and get a tour. They also have a radio station in there that's going to be doing podcasts for the community and many other services. So um, they work with local agencies like, uh, um, gosh, the agencies out of the uh, FRC. Anyways, they, they uh, refer people to get their GED done uh, through these centers. And they're actually graduating many, many people through their GED program. So again, check out their website if you can, Smooth Transition, Inc. 
read my own writing here. Um, I did attend on Sunday, uh, which was an interesting day. Uh, pa- uh, Reverend Paul Miller, who has been the pastor of Christ Lutheran Church for um, here in Desert Hot Springs, he's been a pastor for 37 years, and he actually uh, retired. He still lives in our community. He's still going to be part of our COP program at the police station. He was one of the original COPs. Uh, in 1997 when the police department was formed and has been a chaplain for the police department ever since. Uh, but it, we attended, myself, the chief, a lot of community members. It was a great event. I just wanted to make that announcement because you've seen him in the audience do a lot of the invocations. He's going to take some time off uh, and away from the church. He has to enjoy his retirement, but he still will be out in the community. And if you see him, congratulate him on his retirement. Uh, it was well-deserved. Um, Youth court is something that we've talked about in the community as an opportunity to replace citations when it comes to uh, the youth of our community. Uh, myself, Ms. Zavala, and uh, some stakeholders in our community, our police chief, city manager, and others have been working with the DA's office, and we'll be having a study session here real, real soon in the next month or so uh, on this program and what it's going to do for our community. It's a great opportunity. Uh, it goes hand in hand with the YAP program. Um, and so it's going to be a great opportunity, and I hope you come out to see that. As, as talked about Memorial Day, our Community and Cultural Affairs Commission has been working hard with some volunteers on the Memorial Day event. If you've never been to our Veterans Park, we always do a nice Memorial Day and Veterans Day event. Please come out 10 a.m. on Memorial Day. Uh, this year we did negotiate a flyover uh, with the Air Museum, and it's going to be a, a nice flyover. Uh, as we have a great event, as we always do. And then the VFW, I think, is doing an event at 11 o'clock, so you can support them also. And then on June 10th, keep this on your calendar, the Noon Rotary has an appreciation day where they cook some hot dogs for the community and you come out and they're free. At the same time, the Healthy Cities Initiatives uh, chairperson, Jackie Chapman, is putting together a larger safety bicyclist program. The county's in, involved in it and other organizations, and there'll be free uh, gifts given out healthy city and um, programs for food food and other things so look forward to that and again you can find all that on dhsdaily.com it's a it's a great resource for you and the community to utilize and see the events that are coming up and that's all i have today because i can't read the rest of my writing all right oh the uh thank you the memorial wall uh, the Vietnam Memorial, the moving wall for the Vietnam Memorial is coming to Desert Hot Springs on June 22nd. This will be the second time it's been in the community in the last 10 years. In 2010, Eddie? 2011. 11. We had it, and um, Eddie Johnson uh, worked very hard on this, and we uh, hosted it at Desert Hot Springs High School. This year it will be after school ends, so we're going to be hosting it at Mission Springs uh, Park. I want to thank a lot of the cannabis industry who donated probably 90 percent of the the donations we've we've taken in. We set a budget of fifteen thousand. As of today, we have fourteen thousand dollars raised, uh, and this this pays for the wall to come to the community, the construction of the platform, the lighting, uh, the feeding the volunteers, and the housing of the individuals that actually drive the the vehicle here. And we'll be uh, posting this. Uh, I think there's a press release going out really soon by staff and we'll be hosting it. We'll be the only city in the Coachella Valley to have it this year, and we hope you all can come out. It'll be the 22nd through the 26th of June at Mission Springs Park. There will be an opening and a closing ceremony. We'll keep you posted on that. All right. That's all I have tonight, and we're going to move on to public hearings. Our first public hearing is conditional use permit number 06-17 and development agreement DA-04- I'm sorry, 04-17 for the development of two attached two-story cultivation buildings totaling approximately 86,700 square feet on a 2.53 acre site APN 665-030-018 and 665-030-019, located on the San Jacinto Lane between Little Morongo Road and Cabot Road in the light industrial zone. The application is candescent. Uh, I will be recusing myself as I found that my campaign had received a donation of $500 from candescent uh, recently, so I will have to recuse myself per our city ordinance of anything over $250 forces a council member to recuse himself. Mayor Pro Tem Parks will take this item. Thank you, Mayor. Mm. 
I believe you are uh, going to staff this report. staff report. Yeah, well, I was going to say good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, Madam Mayor Pro Dem, council members, <laughs> residents, uh, business owners, developers. Uh, I'm going to make this brief because we have a pretty long meeting. Uh, there's an application for a uh, cultivation project located, as you see here on the vicinity map, on uh, San, the north side of San Jacinto Lane. I have outlined on the site plan here uh, the area for the temporary parking of the uh, tractor trailer, semi truck, and then on uh, both sides of that, you'll see the location of the roll up doors for box size trucks. Uh, here's a representation of what the project uh, is going to look like once it's completed. Uh, the square footage, we've got 86,000 uh, plus square feet total, 75 plus uh, square feet of cultivation and ancillary cultivation uses, a little over 11,000 for office. By uh, looking at those square footages, staff has come up with a fiscal impact of $800,000, eight, $805,000, $10,000, uh, $800,510, I should say, sorry. <laughs> so get that clear. Uh, staff has uh, the draft uh, mitigated negative declaration has been noticed, circulated, and made available to the public for review and comments. As of this afternoon, no comments have been received. It is available for council consideration. We are a recommendation adoption of this MND. With that, uh, this is a recommendation from the Planning Commission for approval of one, the mitigated negative declaration for the project. Two, conditional use permit 06-17, and three, development agreement number 0417 for the construction of two two-story cultivation buildings uh, to be constructed on the north side of San Jacinto Lane between Little Morongo and Cabot Road in the light, in, uh, light industrial <coughs> zoning district, APN 665-040-001. We do have, uh, the applicant is here, and we have a representative uh, from the consulting firm, and staff is available mm -hmm. if you have any questions. That concludes our report. Okay, uh, any questions of staff from city council? Okay, we will open the public hearing and take testimony from the applicant. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Parks, uh, members of the council, my name is Paul DiPilatus with MSA Consulting and here bringing you another quality cultivation project tonight. Um, we don't have too much to add to what staff has said. Uh, Candestin, as you know, is the, uh, the one project currently open in the city, or one, or one or two. Uh, this will be their second building uh, and this will be a, a ground up structure. So um, again, we think it's well designed, uh, meets all the city requirements and we'd be happy to answer any questions tonight. Hey, is there any public testimony? Thank you. Hearing none, there's nothing for the applicant to rebut, so we will close the public hearing. It's now time for city council discussion and questions to staff and approve. I've got one question. Okay. This is the first time we've had a cogeneration project, which I'm glad about actually. Most cogeneration plants though are steam oriented. What, what happens is you generate electricity and then you use steam throughout the factory. And I assume that's not what's happening here. They're probably hooked up to the HVAC system in some way. Okay, that's all I needed to know. Thank you. Madam Any Mayor, other questions? There's no other questions to make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve staff recommendation. Do I hear a second? second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. It uh, passes unanimously. I'm sorry, four with one recusal.
Can we get Scott back in here now? Please. <laughs> Item five is taken care of, and now we're on item number six. This is a conditional use permit, uh, number 16-6, 17-16, and development agreement DA 11-16 and 12-16 for the development of two adjacent 2.31 acre lots, APN 663-280-003 and 004. Each of the one main buildings and two greenhouse structures totaling 51,968 square feet on each site and associated parking and other improvements located east of Little Morongo Road and north of Two Bush Palms Trail within the Light Industrial Zone District. And the applicant is Brian Maddox. Okay. Staff Thank report. Again, Mr. Mayor, uh, I will be brief on this one as well. Um, the Cultivation project is located across two parcels. Uh, I don't think there's a name on that road. It's Thomas Road in the county and a continuation. So it's about 700 feet to a, uh, about 1,200 feet across from Little Morongo and north of Two Bunch Palms. Uh, here's a site plan showing the uh, proposed area for the temporary parking uh, and also the site plan showing the main building and uh, the greenhouses. Here's an elevation. Uh, staff has uh, put a red highlight around the roll-up doors. Uh, here we've got the square footage, total square footage. We're just under 52,000 square feet, uh, 11,000 square feet of cultivation in the main building. The uh, two greenhouses, uh, as the project is now, is a little over just under 39,000. Uh, that totals uh, 49,881 for cultivation. Um, and the, uh, as you can see, the fiscal impact for the project will be just over a, a million dollars. It'll be a million eighty-seven thousand six hundred twenty dollars uh, With that, the draft MND has been uh, noticed, circulated, and made available to the public for review and comments. Uh, public, the public period uh, Statutory comment period has already ended, and as of today, uh, we have not received any comments. Staff has not. Uh, it is available for consideration by the council. Staff is recommending adoption of the MND. With that, the Planning Commission did make a positive recommendation for approval of the following. One, the mitigated negative declaration for the Maddox Cultivation Project. Two, conditional use permits 1616 and 1716. And three development agreements, 11-16 uh, and 12-16, for the development of two adjacent sites, each with a two-story main building, and actually that should read two greenhouses, uh, located on the east side of Little Morongo and north of Two Bunch Palms. Uh, APNs are 663-280-003 and 004. Staff is available if you have any questions. The applicant is here in the audience, and we do have a representative uh, from the consulting firm here as well. And we'll open questions to staff uh, by city council. Mr. Betts? Yeah, the Thomas Road, what's going to happen on that? Do, do we have a drawing that shows the improvements on that? <coughs> that I'm not aware of. Danny, do you know? It's a standard street section. What's that? It's a standard, standard street section. section. So they are going from Little Morongo out? They're actually, I think, taking access on the street to the south. Can we get that drawing? Let me, let me see that. Uh, that one. Yeah, see, I, I believe they're taking access from the southern portion of the property. That's correct. So they're going to go up from Two Bunch Palms? No, no, from Little Morongo. They'll cut across eastward. Here. Is there a road right of way there? There is right here. We'll have to access. We'll have to figure out the access. What's the name of the street? I don't believe there is a name. As What's the name of the project? This this project? Yeah. It's Maddox Cultivation uh, Project. So it's probably Maddox Street then, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, Brian Maddox, uh, nice to see you guys. Uh, just to clear up some of this. Yeah, um, we have a 30-foot easement on the south part of our property, and it will run all our utilities and access to the property. Okay. And any other questions? I'm right here. <laughs> we'll get right to you in a minute for the applicant. Any other questions to staff? 
All right, we'll open the public hearing. Would anybody like to speak on this item? Um, I'm going to give you, the applicant, just a second. Uh, actually, first, I'm sorry. We're going to open the public hearing and take testimony from the applicant. Brian? Okay. Uh, yeah, once again, Brian Maddox, uh, great to be in the city. Any questions, uh, be, be happy to answer them. I'm going to take testimony from the public this time. Would anybody like to speak to this item? Second call. Final call. I will give the opportunity for the uh, applicant to rebut any of those comments, which there was none. <laughs> I will close the public hearing. Is there any direct questions to the applicant? All right. Thank you very much. At this time, uh, City Council will discuss and have any questions for staff, or I will accept a motion. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, if I could interrupt just for one moment. Mm -hmm. This development agreement, um, although it was good, did not have the uh, general language that we're trying to enter um, into some of the development agreements. It I think the language was suggested by Mr. by Councilman McKee maybe about two weeks ago or so, and it's 7.2 for the special review. The City Council, it just says currently the City Council may order a special review. It's going to say the City Council's uh, City Manager or Chief of Police. So. Any other comments or questions? I'll if not, I'll accept the motion. Motion to approve. With the added language, please. Yeah, I hear that as a motion and a second. You both agree? Yes. Okay. Uh, are there any other comments? Can't get anything on past her, you know. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passes unanimously. Congratulations. Item number seven is the annexation number nine to the city. I'm sorry, Gerald. Did you have to read? You don't have to read anything on that. <laughs> Uh, number seven is annexation number nine to the city of Desert Hot Springs Community Facilities District number 2010-1 services, DHS Properties Investment, LLC. Mr. Tanner is going to give the report, our Administrative Services Director. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Uh, this property is just along Two Bunch Palms Trail in the industrial area. This item is to levy special taxes for the purposes of providing services. Uh, including lighting or lighting, landscaping, and drainage. And I'd be happy to answer any questions from the council. I'll open the public hearing at this time regarding the proposed annexation of the territory of the Community Facilities, facilities District 2010 1 services and the levy of special taxes. Is there anybody that would like to present testimony on this item? I mean, it's the public. Anybody would like to stand and present? No. Um, Mr. City Clerk, uh, do we have any written protest? No, Mr. Mayor. No written protest has been received. Uh, City Clerk, Mr. City Clerk, uh, is there any, any persons registered to vote in this territory proposed to be annexed into the district? There are none. Mr. City Clerk, if the owners of all the taxable properties in the, in the district have consented to holding the special election on May 2nd, 2017, immediately following the public hearing? Yes. Mr. City Clerk, if you concur uh, that the special election may be held on May uh, 2nd, 2017, immediately following this public hearing. I concur. I will now close the public hearing. Uh, my, the uh, recommendation by city staff is adopt the resolution of the City Council of the City of Hot Springs calling an election for the purpose of uh, submitting the levy of special tax within the area proposed to be annexed to the Community Facilities District 2010-1 services to the qualified electors of the proposed territory. Uh, Mr. City Clerk, if, uh, he, uh, have you received the official ballots? I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, if, you, uh, if the Council wants to take action on that. I'm sorry, we need to take action on that first. That's a recommendation by the City, to the City Council by staff. Do I have a motion? Move staff uh -huh. recommendation. I have a motion by Mr. McKee, seconded by Ms. Zavala. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. City Clerk, uh, have you received the official ballots or other election materials from the landowners who can cast their vote on behalf of the owners of all the properties, including in territory proposed to be annexed into commu Community Facilities District Number 2010-1 services? Yes, I have. Uh, canvas the election. Mr. City Clerk, you may canvas the election this time. He will open the ballot and declare the results and file the certificate of election results. Okay, the ballot has uh, been received with a vote of yes. As the mayor declared the election results, um, 
And by the canvas of this return ballots, uh, the second recommendation to the City Council is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Desert Hot Springs declaring election results for the Community Facilities District Number 2010-1 Services Annexation Number 9 on the propo proposition with rec respect to the annual levy of special taxes to pay for services set forth in Section 4 of the resolution of the intent. That's the recommendation for a motion. Do I have? Move staff recommendation. Thank you. Second. I have a motion and a second, Mr. McKee, Ms. Parks. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So passes unanimously. Thank you very much. You need to read anything, Mr. City Clerk? No. Okay. Item number eight is a public hearing, and this is the Creating Special Tax Area 19 DHS Properties Investment LLC within the Desert Hot Springs Special Public Safety Tax Area. Mr. Tanner. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. This item is uh, it's for the same property. It's to levy a special tax for public safety in order to relieve the uh, general fund. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, we'll open the public hearing regarding the establishment of a public safety uh, tax for Zone 19 DHS Properties Investment LOC of the Desert Hot Springs Public Safety Tax Area and the levy of special taxes. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to make testimony for this item? Present testimony. All right, Mr. City Clerk, do we have any written protest? No, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. City Clerk, uh, are there any persons registered to vote in this territory of the zone? There are none. Mr. City Clerk, the owners of all the taxable property in the zone have consent to the holding of the special election on May 2nd, 2017, immediately following the public hearing? Yes. Uh, Mr. City Clerk, if he concurs that the special election may be held on the 2nd, May 2nd, uh, no, I'm sorry. I just asked that question, didn't I? Or is that no? That's a separate question. Uh, City Clerk, may uh, he concurs that the special election may be held on May second, twenty seventeen, immediately following the public hearing. Yes, I can. All right. Um, at this time, we'll be closing the public hearing. Mr. City Clerk, have you received the ballot, the official ballot, and other election materials from the landowner who can cast the votes on behalf of the owners of all the properties included in the Zone 19 DHS Properties Investments LLC of the Desert Hot Springs Public Safety Tax Area? Yes, I have. Mr. City Clerk, canvass the election of the return ballots and declare the results and file the certificate of election results, please. Uh, the ballot returned uh, with a vote of yes. As mayor, declare the election results and the canvas of the return ballot. Um, a action by the city council now will be that the recommendation is to adopt a, a, an ordinance of the city of Desert Hot Springs establishing a special public safety tax for police and fire protection services for Zone 19, Desert Hot Springs Property Investments LLC of the Desert Hot Springs Public Safety Tax Area. Mm -hmm. We would like to make that motion. There's a motion by Mr. Betts. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Zavala. Any other comments by council? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So it passes. Mr. City Clerk, you don't have to read anything? No, Mr. Mayor. All right, with that said, thank you very much. We're going to move on to the administrative calendar. Our first item on our administrative calendar tonight is number nine. Resolution designating an office, official representative and an alternate representative to the public agency coalition enterprise PACE, JPA Board of Directors, and to change the employment benefits program from Cal Choice to the PACE program. Mr. Tanner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Pam Hughes will be making the presentation tonight for this item. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council, and staff. Tonight, staff is recommending the Council take action to approve the Public Agency Coalition Enterprise, or PACE, Joint Powers of Authority membership, which will allow the City to change employee medical benefit coverage to the plans under PACE membership. Just to give you a little background, prior to November 2014, City employees had medical coverage with Anthem Blue Cross under a large employer group population. The Affordable Care Act laws required 50 or more eligible employees to be considered a large group employer. Due to a reduction in staff, the city fell under that 50 employee threshold and lost coverage with Anthem Blue Cross. That number has since changed to 100 employees, so we are still not eligible to qualify on our own. The city then had to obtain medical coverage with plans based on a small group population with higher co-pays, higher deductibles, and higher out-of-pocket costs to the employees. However, the city had no financial impact at the time. It was not staff nor council's intention to reduce employee medical benefits to save costs. It was just an unfortunate circumstance that occurred. 
By joining membership under PACE JPA, the city will be eligible to offer plans similar to the plans previously offered to employees as a large group employer. At this time, I'd like to introduce Yvette Fields from our insurance brokerage, Keenan & Associates. She'll explain a little more about the PACE JPM, JPA membership. How does this <laughs> um, I'll just go high level over what PACE is. PACE is a JPA. Um, PACE is a JPA that's comprised of a number of public agencies. Uh, it is housed under what we call the MCSIG um, program. It's uh, mainly made up of school districts, and we're taking the um, underwriting advantage of the large school district to put in our public agencies. Within the past year, we have put in 30 public agencies into this program to get um, take advantage of the large group rates and benefits. Um, so I'll skip over this. I kind of went over that, what the JPA is. Uh, the next slide here just goes over the layers of protection of what McSig is. Um, it's an advisory committee. We have an executive committee, executive director, the board, and we have our CTEC, which um, manages the accounting and the billing for CTEC. Uh, we have actuarial services. We have an underwriter that manages um, underwriting, auditors, and the PACE board. Um, being a member of the PACE board, you will have two uh, members that are PACE board that will have voting rights. This is the renewal history of PACE. Um, average renewal has been for the PPL plan. 3.2% and for our EPO plan, which is a hybrid of an HMO and a PPO, um, at 2.86%. Typically, when you talk about benefits on a large group, the trend runs about 2 to 12, 10 to 12%. So this um, program is running very well. Uh, some benefits to consider, we have 10 plans available option. The options that were selected here are offered at, for Desert Hot Springs is a PPO plan, an EPO plan, and then you'll have Kaiser HMO. The premium costs are very competitive. There are benefits for early retirees, so if you have any early retirees that are under the age of 65, they can still remain on the plan. And the benefits to the agency, you get a stable group, you have stable benefits with stable rates. Local representation and local control as well. Um, there's um, some added benefits to the program. You'll have the Anthem 360 nurse line available, live health online available. There's teledoc medicine. So if anyone's sick, you have children that are sick, you don't have to go to the doctor. You can videotape it and you'll see a doctor and get any prescription that way. There's Cast Light Health. Cast Light Health is if you need to manage all your benefits online, your insurance online, x-rays online, all that can be on um, Cast Light Health. And then there's corporate services, and all these are value added at no additional cost. And this is a comparison of what the um, plans are. This is what we call our EPO plan. And what the comparison shows is what your current CalChoice plan offerings were or are. They are individual rated plans. Um, and there is a choice between the gold level tier. And on the last column is what your old plans used to be with Anthem Blue Cross. And what the PACE plan is, it shows the Anthem Blue Cross EPO 50. So you just have a comparison of what your plans were, um, what your current plan is, and what your upcoming plan will be. Very competitive plan. So, those, um, so you'll be going back to what was similar to your Anthem Blue Cross plan before um, you lost coverage with Anthem. The next is similar, but it's based on the HMO. And this is the Kaiser plan. This is the only HMO plan that will be offered here. And the next is a PPO offering. Um, PPO um, gives you that added network benefit. There's a low deductible of 250, um, 500 for family. It's very competitive PPO plans. Um, these are what the rates will be with the EPO 15 and the PPO 250 and what the Kaiser rates will be. And these rates are guaranteed for 18 months. So they'll go from 7117 into 1119. Um, this is what your renewal look like currently. Um, we received it just a couple of days ago. So your renewal with CalChoice, 
came in at 10.2% increase. Um, that, and that was based on just individual increase ranges from 2% to 24%. It was based on age, and there's a couple of plan changes, and one of the carriers left um, the small group market, which was Aetna. So it kind of um, increased the inflation, in, increased the numbers on there. And they mapped it to the most mapped-like plans, which was the United Healthcare Platinum Plan, which was one of the richest plans. And as we did, because Aetna exited the small group market, they were not competitive in the small group market. Um, any questions? Can you go back to the three, yes, that slide there? How, how is that structured? Is that monthly? These are monthly premiums. And based on a four tier, that's how your um, rating structure is currently set up. So that's, that's a lot more than what the individuals are paying. Pam, is that a lot more than what the individuals are paying? Um, some of them are a little bit more, I think their spouse might be a little bit less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's total cost. What's, what's, the, what's the employee cost? Sorry. The employee costs are not going to change. They're going to stay where they are. The okay. employee only is going to be 42, 63, I think it is a month. Employee and spouse is, um, 7730 um, employee and children is 99 and employee and family is 303 a month. Perfect. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Go ahead. Um, I, th I think you may have mentioned this while I was writing something down, and I apologize. What's, what's the overhead that's, that exists in this program as far as costs for you guys administering it? Uh, there, there is no fee um, for us to administer it. We do get commissions off of off the program. It's eight and a half percent of premium, and that's that's all that we um, receive. Thank you. You mentioned early retirees. I just wanted to make sure this was the case. We have no medical benefits for retirees here, as far as I know. That would mean that they would pick up the entire cost if they were in a position that they wanted to continue it yes, that's afterwards. Right. Okay. Thank you. The, the other thing, how many, there's a two year period that we cannot get out of the program. Exactly. Uh, how many people after two years have gotten out? We have not um, had anyone exit the JPA. Thank you very much. Any other questions by staff? I'll open it up for public comments. Anybody in the audience like to make a public comment to this item? Final call. All right, I'll close public comments um, at this time. If there's no more questions for staff or the presenter, uh, I'll accept a motion. Motion to accept staff recommendation. Staff recommendation is to adopt a resolution and authorize the city, ma city manager to execute. Second. There's a motion and second. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number 10 is the agreement with HDL companies to provide economic development services um, and this is our administrative services director again mr. Tanner thank you mr. mayor hold on, hold on one second uh, it was brought to my attention that we had to designate an official representative alternative representative was that uh, the last item mr. city manager did you did you have who you're, you're designating as the official representative and alternative rep? To the resolution. And who are they? It's uh, Joe Tanner as the primary and then Pam Mews as the um, alternate. Okay. And it's in the resolution. Okay. Does that clarify? Okay. Item number 10, Mr. Tanner. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so what uh, we have before the council tonight for an uh, economic development item uh, is, a, is a contract with HDL Solutions. HDL is currently uh, performing some work for us already uh, with sales tax and, and property tax, and they're also performing the, uh, a couple audits for us for, the, for, the, for two of the marijuana dispensaries. Uh, overall, sales tax in DHS has been uh, relatively flat uh, the last few years. It is uh, very uh, tied to the price of gas. So as the price of gas goes up, our sales tax numbers will also go up. As the price of gas goes down, uh, so does our, our sales tax. And what's been happening in the last couple of years is gas prices have slowly been on the decline 
other areas of, of retail, uh, restaurants, hotels, sales tax has gone up, and so it's kind of balanced, balanced each other out. Uh, however, uh, five of our top sales tax producers are gas stations and service stations, and we really are uh, lacking in any uh, in a real uh, retail diversity uh, that a, uh, a true downtown or, or a mall uh, might provide uh, the city. Uh, our two goals in uh, moving this item forward is one, to increase uh, sales tax to keep pace with our expenses, and then also offer uh, amenities for our citizens to help them in, improve the uh, quality of life. Uh, this contract, there are uh, three tasks. Uh, the first task, which is, comes at a cost of $10,000, includes a uh, city profile, and this would include a, uh, a profile to, to determine what the current city incomes are, the current market, uh, identify some opportunity sites, drive times to, to other local um, uh, retail, major retail centers. Uh, task two is another $10,000, which would include an action plan. Uh, this is not a full-blown uh, strategic plan. It just identifies some strategies moving forward. For example, what uh, retailers to recruit and identify uh, certain areas of the city that we want to focus on, like Palm Drive or, or near the freeway. And then three is to actually go out and start uh, recruitment of, the, of uh, some of these businesses. Uh, other than the 20000 for the city profile and action plan, the uh, consultant will be compensated for 15% uh, uh, for a period of three years of any uh, new sales tax generators that they bring in. And in the staff report, it lays out uh, some general outlines of what cities could expect to get from, from certain businesses. Uh, for example, a small retail center. Uh, 5,000 square feet would generate about $12,000 per year for the city. That 15% translates to $1,800 uh, for, for a three-year period. Uh, we also have Mr. Foster here. If you'd like to add anything, uh, go over some details and help answer any questions as well. Thank you. I have um, five packets. I'll, I'll leave with the city council. Uh, my name is Barry Foster. I'm a managing principal with HDL Companies. Um, about three years ago, um, HDL, and HDL has been around now almost 35 years, and, and they, they really are one of the leading um, consultants in the state for sales tax and property tax, but th they've always kind of thought about going into economic development and, and helping cities and providing some, another array of services. And so about, about three years ago, I went to work for them and, and started up a new division in the company to do economic development service with cities and, and my background is I worked for 30 years in local government 23 of those were in California for four different cities um, my last job I was the community and economic development director for a city of about 200,000 um, I also worked in Rancho Mirage uh, for eight years and and helped bring the river project Monterey marketplace and other, other a number of other uh, developments there um, Econ Solutions really is, it's, um, we kind of customize a program to fit with whatever the clients, whatever the city's ah. needs are. And, and um, we've done work for about 40 cities in, in California during those uh, almost three years. Right now we're currently working with 24 cities and there's about four or five more that should come on board in the next um, 30 days. And so we've got uh, three people working on the Diamond Bar office. We also do work up in Northern California. Um, you know, the, the program that, that we put together here, um, it's doing some of, the, some of the upfront work that I think the action plan is important. We've done about eight of those for clients in the last year or so, and that really kind of helps you focus on what it is that your city is and what you can do and help streamline it. And as, as um, Joe said, it's not, a, it's not a 100 or 200 page strategy that you put up on the shelf. It's really, um, it's very um, action oriented. It's, it's more like... 15 pages. It looks at a three-year period of time. It looks at the marketplace and what you're able to achieve. And, and it's, it, again, it's, it's more focused on, on action and getting results done. Um, and then the, the last piece of, that Joe talked about is actually going out and doing the recruiting, doing the marketing. And, and um, you know, we're, we're kind of putting our money where our mouth is. We're not going to get paid for that unless we produce. And so we're, we're actually, if, if we generate new users, <coughs> Take a small, modest percentage of that, so we don't get paid unless we produce. And we've been pretty successful um, in a lot of other cities and communities. We've actually, during the last couple of years, produced 33 new businesses, helped reposition, you know, go into a, a, 
a former grocery store, and sometimes you have to split it up. We've done three different Kmarts. We had one in Banning where we helped put in a, a Hobby Lobby, a Marshalls, a Party City, Big Five Sporting Goods. They're doing a pad there with the Chipotle. Now that's a real shot in the arm for that community and produced a lot of new significant sales tax. And so we did a number of former Kmarts and so we've also done some ground up development. So we'd like to come in and, and help you, um, as Joe talked about, take those sales tax revenues and boost them up. And, and it's not just sales tax, it's also producing new jobs and, and, and new opportunities in your community. You're, people want to be able to look at what they're not able to get here. So part of what we do is, is figure out um, kind of a leakage analysis, what your people, what your residents are spending their money on and what they're having to go outside the community. And sometimes they're going to the Coachella Valley to, to Rancho Mirage and those kinds of places because they can't get them here. And so we'd like to be able to help um, address that. So um, again, we think it's, it's a very um, cost effective uh, proposal and uh, we urge your consideration. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any comments from the public at this point? Final call. Close public comments, and I'll open it up for council. Um, I'll start. I, myself, and Mr. McKee lead the economic development committee here in Dutch Hot Springs, and we haven't had very many meetings in the last six months because we've been waiting for some sort of service like this. One of the first things I think I talked to city manager about when he got here was we need to have some sort of uh, we need help. Uh, we we live in an island. On this side, people have to come here for a reason, but a lot of our tax revenue is, is leaked, as you said, across the freeway. And at one point, uh, five years ago, it was analysis was done. It was about 60 cents of every dollar that people make here was being spent somewhere else. And I do think we have great opportunity here. We just need to encourage those businesses that trust you to get here. So I'm excited about the program. I like mean to say something. Uh, we can't bring up the chart that's on page 577, can we? I'm, I'm throwing this out to you basically as uh, I should have said something earlier. If you can't, that's fine, Gerald. But it's, it's an attachment to the item. Okay. The, the reason I bring this up, most cities in the state of California get about 30% of their income from sales tax. We get about 8%. And uh, this has been a huge problem in our city. Uh, we've, ha we've hired economic development people before at great cost, uh, uh, much, much higher rates than what we're talking about here. And, uh, and I, I debated some of the, there's a secondary methodology we could do by paying you $20,000 a year, basically paying you hourly rather than giving you a percentage. But I think that the percentage makes sense from the standpoint of, of giving you a um, incentive for for doing the job. Um, this is, from my perspective, something the entire council has worked on for a long time and been cognizant of as being one of our big weaknesses. If the reason I ask this is, if, Desert Hot Springs is very easy to see. It's the line on the bottom of both charts. The line on the top is Palm Desert, and they bounce around between eight and ten thousand dollars per capita. We're down around eight, a thousand dollars per capita. If you look at the bottom one, that shows Riverside County, uh, Southern California, and in uh, California itself. That's where we are. This is an opportunity for us to shift more of the burden of taxation away from homeowners and, and the real estate taxes we have in place now to a sales tax that other cities are collecting now. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, this is a really good program that's had a good effect in some of our sister cities, Banning specifically. So I, I'm, I'm really positive about this and, and, and hope that we can pass it today. Thank you. And there's a lot of a lot of times we've been uh, compared to the town of Yucca Valley, um, comparably, and, and a lot of people have said, "Why can't you be more like them?" Now they have a major highway running through their city, but we have a lot of the same demographics, and I think they'll be excited to know that you've worked for that city. Yep. Any other? Yeah, uh, Mr. Betts and then Miss Savala. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. My name is Barry Foster. Very welcome to uh, Desert Hot Springs. I think you're going to get a vote here, and I just wanted to thank the city manager for his work in uh, bringing this one forward. He uh, explained it to me a little bit before the meeting uh, yesterday, 
and I'm very impressed with your presentation and your credentials, and I'm looking forward to great things from you. So when it's time, I'm ready to vote yes. Ms. Savala? Uh, I just wanted to mention that I feel that that 15 percent is really um, important in the sense that it serves as an incentive to actually bring the businesses here, because that's how you get paid at the end of the day. So I'm very pleased with that. And, just, and we've, we've, done, we've done it both ways, but again, I think we're trying to fit the needs um, of the client, and, and um, you know, we don't, we're not hesitant at all, at all about, um, you know, we're not always successful, but we're a lot of the time we are, and, and so you know, we're willing to do that. I'm excited to see what's to come. Ms. Parks, I have wanted this for a long time. I'm very, very thrilled. Uh, what, how, how do you go about getting the businesses to come here? Is it from prior association or um, Las Vegas's uh, um, ICSC, or or how how do you how do you get them to recognize that Desert Hot Springs might be the ideal place for them to? Well, I think, I think the, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of set the stage and figure out what your voids are and what your opportunities are. And we're going to look at your demographics and all the market analytics. That's really what the retailers and restaurants look for. They want to know that, that, that if they put a location in there, they're going to be successful and that their customer base is going to be there. So it's not just me saying I want you to come to the hot springs, but we've got the market analytics to back that up. And But, um, you know, I've been doing this a long, long time. I have a... Um, I have a senior associate who was an economic development manager for city for 15 years, and so um, we have a lot of connections over the years. Um, I started setting up meetings for Las Vegas uh, two weeks ago, and we're still three weeks out. Um, last year, I had 45 meetings in two and a half days. It's almost every half hour, um, and so we'll hit that hard. We also go to ICSC events in um, used to be in San Diego, it'll be in LA this year. There's another one in LA in February. We go up to one in Monterey that we just went up to, even though that's Northern California, there's a lot of folks from Southern California that are up there. So we're very, very active, and, and but you know, we're, it's an ongoing battle, and, and we're, we're pressing that, and, and um, you know, again, I think we've been very, very successful. We're doing multiple transactions with, with, um, with users. So we bring them a site, we have a little bit of credibility because we've done it before, and, and they know that we've done our homework and we've looked at those market analytics. But um, you want to get your foot in the door. You want to you want to tell that story and paint that picture, and, and the analytics do that. And then we've got a little bit of credibility, and you had to just push and push and push and push. Thank you. And the uh, final comment is this: um, when we did have an economic development consultant, and we did push, even though businesses didn't come, a lot of businesses rehabbed their locations because we made them aware of how much business was coming. A lot of them did a research and come to find out that they were one of the top. Uh, revenue producers here in Desert Hot Springs. Uh, Dollar General was built and come to find out it's one of the top revenue producers in, in the district. So there's there's definitely opportunity here and I'm excited. I'll accept the motion at this time. Move I'm staff moved. recommendation. There's a motion by Mr. McKee, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, any other comments by uh, council or staff? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Item number 11, we'll be serving as a successor agency at this point. A resolution approved. I have a question, if I can ask the city attorney, please. Let me um, announce the item first, and then we'll okay. go through. Resolution approving uh, purchase and sale agreement and joint escrow instructions with Howard Lee for a real property located at 66459-66463 and 66467-66483 Pearson Boulevard and 12021 and 12-0-2-12-0-5-5, and 12-0-6-5-2-12-1-0-5, Palm Drive, APN 641-041-020-023-047-049-050 and-051. Mr. McKee? Thank you. I recuse myself on this because of a campaign contribution of a person no longer involved in this. So I assume that I'm okay now, but. That's correct. So long as it's not with the uh, person within the contract, you're absolutely fine to participate now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Betts. Mr. Mayor, I'm still across the street at 12106 and a half Palm Drive. So I have an economic interest uh, that, that this is uh, too close to our hair salon. So I will recuse. Thank you very much. Any other comments from staff or council before we begin? 
All right, we'll make way for Mr. Betts to exit the room. As soon as he exits the room, Mr. Tanner, it's all yours. Okay, just making sure. So the, thank you again, Mr. Mayor and Council. The item tonight uh, before you is the property that's along Palm and Pearson where, where Glossies and playoffs are, are located. So definitely a key strategic property within within the city's downtown. Uh, as we all are aware that in 2012, uh, the st state of uh, California dissolved uh, redevelopment. Uh, and in turn, part of that process was to develop a long range property management plan, uh, which was approved by the successor agency oversight board and department of finance. Uh, Moving that, that plan forward, uh, staff put out an RFP, uh, hired a broker, and then listed the, the properties uh, to dispose of. Uh, at the time that the uh, properties were listed, a market value of, of just over $1.4 million uh, was determined by the broker. Uh, over, over the course of the time that the property was listed, we, we did receive multiple bids from, from different owners, and we have an offer for $1.75 uh, million from uh, Mr. Howard Lee, who is in the audience with his, with his team. Uh, I think there's three things that are uh, very important to this deal. Uh, one is that staff feels that this is a very good, uh, good uh, solid offer, and, this, and the city is getting uh, a more than fair deal on the, on the price. Uh, the second thing is that staff did absolutely everything possible to uh, help the tenants uh, during this process. We met with them uh, very, very early on to, to, to go over what the logistics are and, and what, could, what could they expect and then offer our assistance in anything we could do. Uh, as soon as uh, we were engaged by Mr. Lee and his team, we, we met with uh, the tenants uh, once again. And we are trying to uh, we try we put them in connection with with Mr. Lee and, and his team to see if uh, if a lease could be uh, worked out. Uh, there's all but playoffs is on a month to month lease at the moment. Uh, playoffs I think has about eight or nine months uh, remaining on on their lease. And then third, uh, when we met with uh, Mr. Lee and his team, we feel uh, very confident. We had a very positive meeting. Uh, to go over what they what they wanted to do and, and their vision for the property, which I think is very positive for the city and, and will help uh, help the downtown uh, quite a bit. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. And then also our broker and Mr. Lee are here to help answer any questions. Any questions for staff? Yeah, I, I've got just one really. Sure. And that, that revolves around tenants again. Mm -hmm. um, I was not involved in the discussion initially, but I, I think that it's important, at least from my standpoint, that we do everything we can to help the tenants that have been in that building during this period of time. And um, I'm glad to hear that the meetings have taken place and, and hope that we can come to good resolutions as far as them remaining in the building. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? I'll open the uh, public comments, but anybody like to make a public comment at this time? I don't see anybody standing. Final call. I will close the public comments at this time and uh, again go back to City Council. Is there a motion or any more comments? Move staff recommendation. Second. There's a motion by Mr. McKee and a second by Ms. Zavala. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passes 4 0. Congratulations. Someone grab Mr. Betts, please. Maybe we can find Mr. Betts. Is Mr. Betts out there? Mr. Betts, final call? There he is. All right. Item number 12 is a resolution authorizing fingerprinting for the federal criminal background checks for the, med uh, for the marijuana industry. And this will be our police chief, Del Monde. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. Um, currently for the marijuana industry, we do live scan 
uh, criminal background checks on all anybody that's related to the business that will be working in the business. That check is done through the California Department of Justice um, and only includes the state of California. Marijuana is still illegal at a at the federal level and the FBI will not allow us access to their um, criminal database for employment purposes. Um, with the current federal administration, um, and since we don't know really what their stance is going to be regarding marijuana, um, we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to be in compliance with every law that's out there making the industry and this community as safe as possible. So arguably somebody could have a conviction, a felony conviction that would um, not allow them to be employed in the industry here in another state and we would not know about it. So I've spoken with the State Department of Justice who has spoken, spoken with the Federal Department of Justice and if the local governing body will create a resolution um, that is enclosed, uh, thank you, Ms. Mesrahi, um, that states it's for employment purposes only, then they will allow us um, access to that database. Um, for again for for criminal history checks so um, we're asking that um, the City Council approve that so that we can conduct more thorough background checks on those individuals any public comments on this item second call final call on public comments City Council having questions for the chief mayor motion to approve unless there's any discussion second there's a motion a second is there any discussion all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So passes 5-0 unanimously. Item number 13 is the final appeal of statement of matter of the City of Desert Hot Springs versus John Van Beek at all. Riverside Superior Court case number PSC 1602949. Our city attorney will take this item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council. Uh, the staff report pretty much speaks for itself. This is the final settlement agreement um, on the Van Beek matter. Uh, we had a good resolution uh, with the city. Uh, Van Beek is paying pretty much all of our uh, the attorney's fees on this matter. And uh, if you want me to go into it, I'm more than happy to, but I'm happy to leave it as is. Is there any public comments on this item? Second call, final call. Close public comments. City Council, any questions for the city attorney? Moved. So just to be clear, this is someone who ran afoul of our uh, laws and regulations regarding uh, uh, medical marijuana cultivation and just decided to go ahead and set up shop without city approval. Would that be correct? That's correct. And so as a result of doing all that, uh, we decided we weren't happy about that. The How much are they having to pay for doing that? A little bit over $19,000. So that costs them $19,000. That is correct. Okay. That's all I needed to say. Move staff recommendation. There's a there's a motion by Mr. McKee, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Parks. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So it passes unanimously. Item 14 is the Coachella Valley Association for Governments, CVAG, Allen Seaman Bus Pass Program. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the Council, Gerald's going to uh, provide the staff report on this item. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council. Uh, CVEG has submitted a request to each of the um, uh, member cities here in the Valley uh, for a request for funding uh, for $3,000 towards the Allen Seaman Bus Pass Program. Uh, CVEG has also provided um, a chart that shows um, past contributions from each of the other uh, jurisdictions um, and then including a usage data a report for 2016. Um, that concludes the report. If you have any questions. Any questions by, uh, let me open up for public comments. Anybody like to speak to this item? Final call. Public comments are closed. At this time, we'll take questions from the council. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Who is this providing bus passes for? People in need. Um, I think it's anywhere from homeless individuals to people that are low income to uh, get to 
doctor's appointments, uh, as far as I understand in the past, it's been administered in the city by the FRC, which is the Family Resource Center down in the <coughs> Kmart Shopping Center. I don't know if anybody else has given out passes here. They, they have at, at various times, I think, uh, family services. Oh, family services, I yeah, food now. Those types of organizations, people in need come to you, so they need to get somewhere, they need a doctor's appointment, they hand you a pass. Is there a set list of these uh, people who are passing these out in our city? Yes. It's in the packet. Is it on? At least the ones that exist, the DHS Family Resource yeah, here. Center is listed. On page, there it is right there. But I think it, at some time there were a couple of others that were actually ending out. This is, I think, current. Yeah, the Baptist Church doing it again this year. Okay, so as long as these are the ones that are passing them out, my motion would be to approve with these designated as the official people to pass out the tickets. The passes. There's a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passes unanimously. Item 15 is a resolution to retain qualified public health and safety inspector regarding marijuana facilities. At this time, Mr. Councilmember Betts and McKee had added this item to the agenda. Who would like to speak on it? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've heard from several um, cultivators who are looking to um, get their projects moving along, and there seems to have been a um, holdup for quite a while um, over what I would call Riverside County Fire, but what I understand is Riverside County uh, taking advice from the Riverside attorney, Riverside County attorney, which would be the equivalent of our city attorney, but it happens to be the county attorney. So it's called county council, not county city council, but the county solicitor, correct? Yeah. County council. Okay, good. I just wanted to clarify all that. So it turns out that um, our fate is determined by the ability of the cultivators to get their projects approved and through the process. But it turns out that the, I don't think the county council is so motivated to move the process along for a couple of reasons. First, he's not uh, very in tune with the benefits of medical marijuana, which would be putting it mildly. He's actually uh, um, not in favor of it. Um, so he doesn't look favorably upon applications. They've also taken a position that because it's um, uh, considered a illegal, what does they call it, schedule, schedule one, schedule one uh, drug federally, that um, they can't provide any type of uh, we can't provide them any type of indemnity. Um, is that what you're calling it, indemnity? Um, the word I'm looking for? What they have requested is an indemnification. Okay, an indemnification. But basically you're asking somebody, the net result of that is we're going to provide them an indemnification that if they do what they consider an illegal act, that uh, somehow if somebody comes looking for them, they're going to be able to say, hey, uh, sorry, we got an indemnification. Go talk to those guys. And I don't think the world works that way. And I don't think there's any type of indemnification that we can give them. So anyhow, all this comes up, and this is all after the fact. It's been held up for a while um, before I understood any of this. And so getting together with Councilmember McKee and I, we decided... You know, we both got experience in manufacturing and processes, and we understand that what's looking for is a safe method of approving um, the, these processes. And I saw a roadblock with um, the county process. So this is to give the city manager the tools, whether that be we direct him or we authorize him, to go and seek what would essentially be somebody who's familiar with OSHA regulations and, and these proper procedures, but to direct it away from uh, requiring county fire or the county to provide whatever type of inspection. Now, worked into the ordinance is also uh, some recognition that California law 
uh, makes it possible for the city to do this. And specifically, when the legislature passed this, uh, this uh, legislation said uh, that where the county can act, the city is authorized to. So we're all within bounds there. So this is all designed to, provided staff moves on this and acts and can successfully find somebody quickly to move this process along instead of it being stalled because millions of dollars or at least hundreds of thousands of dollars are being being lost every day that this is delayed. Um, people's projects are being held up. Um, I think that the approach that's being used here is a straight hire. We don't have to go out to RFP, we don't have to do anything else like that. Just, you know, the city manager's got complete and total discretion. And at this point in time after this, if the council would so approve this, um, the only thing holding it up would be the guy sitting there. And I haven't <laughs> seen that he wants to hold anything up. I don't think any grass grows under that man's feet. So this would, uh, I think, uh, move this along and give him the authorization he needs from the council to end this quagmire. And Mr. McKee, I don't know if you have anything to add. I, I'll be really quick. I, I'm really sympathetic on this because, in effect, what, what happens in their process is they create the material that is smoked or ingested, but then they take the rest of the plant and process it to develop oils and tinctures and things like that. This is costing these manufacturers and growers huge amounts of money. Uh, not necessarily the city being slow, but the county being slow in, in recognizing that the process does have to be inspected. And, and I think that this is a good resolution. It gives the city manager the power and flexibility to do whatever's necessary to move this along. Um, and, and I agree with Council Member Betts that it's taken too long already, really, when, a, when, when you look at the situation. So um, I support this resolution and I hope the rest of the council will. Thank you. Comments from staff? Any comments from staff? Any other comments from city council? Open up public comments this time. Anybody would like to speak on this item? You have three minutes. Mr. Saucer, as soon as you state your name, you have three minutes. Your timekeeper is uh, Ms. Wilms. Hi, Mr. Mayor, city council, staff. My name is Jason L. Sasser, and I'm a stakeholder in the cannabis industry here in Desert Hot Springs. First, I'd like to thank Council Member Betts and Council Member McKee for bringing this up and putting it on the agenda. Um, I, I think that Desert Hot Springs has been, is currently, and will continue to be on the cutting edge of the cannabis industry in the state of California, more specifically Southern California. What, what I do see though is a is a definite block or stoppage in getting some of these processes approved, which is why this resolution was created. Um, the good news is, is that it's, it, is, it is affecting certain people, but as more facilities get up and going, it's, I think it's essential that we get something, a mechanism in place now where we can act on this immediately because I've spent all weekend going through the state regulations, reading five different summaries from attorneys. You know, the state finally released their first round of rules and regulations. And, you know, it's, it's some, some exciting times. And beginning 2018, they're going to start accepting applications for all these different license types, which includes license six, and license seven under McCursa, which is volatile and non-volatile extractions. Um, the city of Cathedral, Cathedral City is already approved and there are facilities up and going and producing product in both a volatile and non-volatile situation. Um, there's clear cut rules and regs that a professional can follow to uh, to approve these facilities and what's going on. And as president of DHS CAN, I would just like to thank the two council members for taking a proactive approach and bringing this up so that we can empower the city staff to make the necessary modifications to move these projects forward. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak to this item? Final call. 
We'll close public comments at this time and revert to, or go back to council comments and a motion. Uh, I'd just like to make a couple comments. Uh, I know that I want to say thank you to the county fire marshal. They they actually were very receptive to us and they did do a lot of work with staff. Um, it is being held up by council and county council at this time, and their attorneys are obviously advising the uh, board on a lot of issues that have to do with this industry. And it's a shame that they're we're trying to do the right thing by going through the right process, and it's being held up there. I also know through our state senator that the state fire marshal is working hard on working with the state uh, departments on uh, their ordinances and, and stuff. So is my time up, Ms. Holmes? Um, with that said, uh, we uh, we need to have a workaround so that we can get uh, this moving forward. So I'll be supporting it. Any other comments? I'd like to make a motion if there's no other comments. Any comments? Go ahead. Motion to approve our oh. recommendation, I guess. Motion to approve and adopt the resolution as stated. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any other comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passes unanimously. Item number 16 is a consider, consideration of the revised city council meeting schedule for the summer winter 2017. Uh, I added this again. Uh, thank you to the city clerk for um, his uh, reminding me of this. Last year, instead of doing one meeting in July and one meeting in August, and then going dark in between the, f the first meetings of each month, I had asked the city council to possibly go dark from the after the first meeting of July through the second meeting of August so that uh, staff could have some time to schedule vacations and we could have a little bit of a break, which is a little bit longer. So uh, I believe it's almost seven weeks in between the two meetings. And then also we'll be breaking after the first meeting of December and come back to the second meeting of January. Uh, we had a problem the last few years, in my eyes, in coming back the first meeting in January is right after vacation and it really wasn't a lot to put on and people working during their vacation to get things on the item on the agenda. So my proposal is to uh, go back to the schedule that we had last year and uh, that's the proposal. I'd, I'd like to add an addendum if I could. Sure. Well, Considering the speed at which we've done, done this meeting, can we maybe meet once a month? <laughs> I'm being facetious. <laughs> yeah, you have my vote. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got a uh, question. Sure. The uh, now this doesn't apply to the planning commission or the. Um... No, this is just city council schedule. Okay. Correct. Yeah, the planning commission can adopt something like this, or the other commissions can adopt a schedule like this if they choose to, and that'll be up to staff to advise, advise those commissions and those chairs to put those on as, as their schedule if they choose to. If not, staff will be coming in for those meetings. But it's at the commission's discretion. Right now, they all meet once a month anyway, so shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, with that said, any public comments? I see nobody standing at this time. Final, no public comments. All those in favor of accepting this schedule? Aye. 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 I'm sorry. Is there a motion to accept this? So schedule? moved. Second. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So passes. And with that said, the consent calendar was approved in whole at the beginning of the meeting. That will take us to future agenda items. Uh, is there anything that the council would like to see in the future that hasn't been talked about? I don't hear anybody commenting. Is there any public comments this time? Anybody didn't speak at the beginning of the meeting may have three minutes at this time. I see nobody standing. I will close that. Our next meeting uh, will be... We're still going to be back here at the next meeting? Danny? Are we going to be... you think we'll be back at the Carl May? Oh, yeah, we should be back. Okay, so most likely we'll be at the Carl May. Please check your calendars just in case. Uh, but it looks like we're on track to be back at the Carl May. Again, thank you to Mission Springs Water District for allowing us to use their, their chambers. We are adjourned. You are.